The Olympic Games, the world's greatest sporting spectacle, comes for the first time ever to Australia. The host city is Victoria's capital, Melbourne, and for weeks before the Games, the streets are gay with bunting and decorations, and visitors arrive from almost every country in the world. Melbourne streets become almost international thoroughfares, and they all lead to the huge new sporting arenas where the world's finest athletes pit speed and stamina against each other. The Olympic pool, specially built for the occasion. The Melbourne cricket ground, remodelled into a vast athletic stadium. For nearly two weeks, here was the focal point of world interest as athletes from almost every country in the world strained their utmost to bring honour to their countries. And Melbourne, Australia became as well known as London, New York, Paris or Moscow. Australian athletes too, girls like Betty Cuthbert who outsped her rivals to win three gold medals. And while Melbourne is so crowded with international visitors who are interested in everything Australian, a special sheep show is staged so people can see the quality of the sheep and the wool Australia produces. This Olympic time show is opened by the Governor-General Sir William Slim and it's a display of sheep and wool and shearing methods that cannot fail to interest and impress the people from other lands who come to see it. A modern merino ram on the left and a direct descendant of MacArthur's original flock clearly shows visitors the amazing progress made by sheep breeders in this country. The Governor-General was greatly interested as he was escorted around the various exhibits of the show. Wool is the wealth of Australia, and this show will do much to impress the value of wool on thousands of visitors who, but for the Olympic Games, might never have seen an Australian merino. And to tell the story of wool to the world, the Australian Wool Bureau organised an aerial tour of wool growing areas for a big party of journalists, representing newspapers and magazines with a total circulation of many millions. Journalists and photographers from over 40 countries, men and women who help inform readers throughout almost the entire world. For them, it's a unique opportunity to see the world's greatest wool industry at first hand. For Australia, it's a unique opportunity to obtain worldwide publicity for wool. First stop is Canberra, where the party leaves the aircraft and drives to the Maryville Stud, one of the best known in Australia. Here, the overseas journalists see some of the world's finest merinos, for Maryville has won scores of blue ribbons and trophies at sheep shows over many years. The journalists are invited to inspect the sheep closely, while stud experts point to the outstanding features which have given Australia's sheep and wool an international reputation. Sir Walter Merriman, owner of the stud, is on the left. Well, there's time for just one more picture here, and then the plane takes off northwards to a property nearly a thousand miles from Merriville. It's another famous merino stud, Terek Terek, near Blackall in central Queensland. Here, the journalists see how sheep thrive in almost tropical conditions. That's right, hold still, but don't look so bored, sir. You don't know how many million people will see your picture. At Terek Terek, the visiting journalists see shearing in progress, most of them probably for the first time. There's novelty for them in the speed with which the fleece is taken off and interest in the length and fineness of the wool itself. And then, as the routine work of the property continues, the time comes for the next stage of this aerial tour and the press party goes back to board the aircraft, westward bound towards the centre of the continent and Alice Springs. The long flight again impresses the visitors with Australia's vastness. 
And as the plane carries them towards the Alice, many of them begin to write their impressions of Australia's wool industry. Stories which by now have appeared in newspapers and magazines throughout the world. The plane crosses over the McDonnell Ranges, rearing up from the Red Earth Plains. The Alice can't be far away now, as we see the famous gap with the great North-South Highway running through it. And there it is, the town in the centre, Alice Springs. Australia does have its sheep in the desert, but at the moment the foreign journalists are more interested in canvas than wool, the canvas on which Aboriginal artist Albert Namajira captures the colour of the centre. Namajira himself is away, but the journalists do visit Rex Batterby, who has guided the artist and helped him in many ways. After Batterby has told them something of Aboriginal art, the journalists see art of another kind, the age-old art of boomerang throwing. After a demonstration by a local expert, a Russian reporter tries it out himself and seems delighted with the result. From Alice Springs, the plane flies southeast to Broken Hill and the Olympic party sees flock sheep on Willangi, a property in the far west of New South Wales. And although this is in one of the driest areas of the state, the journalists are greatly impressed at the first-class condition of the sheep. There's an added attraction for visitors out here too, the chance of seeing kangaroos go bounding over the plains. He's really moving. Out here are the wide open spaces that people overseas hear of but rarely see. Few of them realize the vast numbers of sheep that graze here. But perhaps now, through the stories and pictures of reporters from many lands, people everywhere will know that, as far as wool is concerned, Australia is developing its lands to the full. A Japanese reporter, used to teeming millions, must find the outback strange indeed. The stories that she writes will have a wide readership, Stories of Australia's studs and flocks told to a world which, in Olympic year, is more than usually interested in Australia. Quill is someone with a real live souvenir. From the dry outback, the plane flies towards Melbourne, and there now is the Murray River near Mildura, the countryside green and fertile in the irrigation areas. The face of Australia changes again. And as the journalists compare notes, they realise, perhaps for the first time, how Australia, by research and breeding, has developed sheep that can thrive in such widely differing conditions. And so to Wool in Fashion the Australian Wool Bureau's Fashion Awards, providing an opportunity for our visitors to see Australian fashions produced from Australian wool fabrics. Diane models evening knitwear, a two-piece white wool evening set which achieves a delightfully delicate effect by using long strands of wool in cobweb fashion and a glint of gold woven into the hem of the full skirt. New style in suits too, a lovely soft woolen sealskin fabric with the added luxury of a fur collar, high button fitted jacket and slim skirt, all wool superb qualities combined with elegance and style. A dress for after five, cognac sheath, coffee brown light wool, swathed front panel on the skirt the award winner in the dress section. This ensemble has an empire line dress with back button caraco jacket, ideal for day or evening. Catherine shows the winner in the top coat section. It's an easy to wear all purpose coat in loosely woven oatmeal fleck wool. Comfortable, but sacrificing nothing in style.
coordinates are popular, and the one Sally shows here should be no exception. The skirt and jacket blouse are in charcoal grey, light woolen fabric. The jacket itself is hooded, with gay lining showing in the hood and at the cuffs. A day dress this time, a slim fitting sheath given unusual back interest with a long loose panel floating free to the hem, caught at the waist and the top. It's in stone brown wool. Marianne's coffee brown day dress retains the slender look with buttons from neck to hemline. The back features pleating to the waist with an inverted pleat in the skirt. The winter white model is another day dress with an empire line in lightweight wool. Gentle blousing is added to the back to give a dress that is smart without being austere. This ensemble takes its style from Paris, where the cape has been reinstated, whether long and loose or short, wrapping up the shoulders. Here, both the slim sheath dress and the cape itself are in wonderfully smooth, blonde, mink woolen fabric. And though this year's awards aren't announced until after the show, watch for this one again. For the spectators, men and women, every suit and dress has some intriguing new feature. This three-quarter coat, for instance, with its saucer buttons. The coat is heavily rib-knitted and is not as cumbersome as a heavy fabric. Ideal for the car for between seasons. And making its appearance now is a warm short jacket in jacquard design. Wool, right in cut, right in style. This evening frock in mushroom pink features the Parisienne long narrow look with cross draping at the back of the skirt. Notice the heavy lace on the flower panels of the side and on the bodice. And now the winner receives the Wool Fashion Award, won this year by Marlborough Productions for an ensemble that's really tops. Yes, you've seen it before, but it's worth looking at again. It's the winner of an annual award that has captured the imagination of designers throughout Australia. An award which has helped boost Australia's fashion and prove the versatility of wool. Ellie wears the winning ensemble proudly, as any girl would. And so, another award has been won at Olympic time. An award that is a tribute to the wool industry of this country which combine to show Olympic visitors and the world that wool is the supreme award winner in textiles.